Hello guys, welcome to today's video. Um, this video was highly requested and I am going to add a disclaimer that I'm not a sewing professional. I just do this as a hobby and I am self-taught. So the tips and tricks that I'm going to talk about today are things that work for me and the sewing machine that I have. They may not work for everyone, but I do think that you will get something out of this video if you are starting out sewing on paper. So the first thing I want to mention is that the sewing machine that you use is key. I've heard of a lot of people wanting to sew on paper buying either the handheld sewing machines or um, really inexpensive like beginners sewing machines. And I gotta say, I've used both of those and those made me almost give up and think that sewing on paper was not gonna work out. I thought it was super hard. And this sewing machine right here amongst many others has such great reviews and I will put my review down below but I think that having a good quality sewing machine, it does not have to be expensive, can make a world of difference. I got this sewing machine for around $100. So I definitely think um, if you're wanting to sew on paper, invest in a sewing machine. It can be around $100. I will have my link below for this one, um, but there's many others that are, would be similar to this. Okay, the second thing I want to mention is I don't mess with my tension a whole lot, but I do have my tension when I'm sewing on paper set to about three and a half. That's up here. I don't think you can really see that. Um, I'm going to demonstrate and sew on a few pieces of paper here as well as we go along. Um, the second tip that I think is a really big one is when you are um, choosing your stitch, I'm going to bring you down just a bit here. This sewing machine has a ton of different stitching options and you're going to notice that you can also change, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this, but you can also change the stitch length. And for instance, I'm going to go ahead and choose um, a zigzag stitch, and I know you can't really see too well because of the lighting. I choose the number. Now the stitching length is already set at 1.4, and that's basically the, um, the, the length that is between each stitch. The closer together it is, the closer together the holes are going to be. Because we're sewing on paper, I'm gonna put this to two or 2.5. And I highly recommend making sure that your stitch length is is around that because if it is too close together, it's going to possibly tear through your paper much easier. Um, the second thing, when I am sewing on paper that I just previously glued, I make sure not to add too much glue. After I'm done sewing something that does have glue, um, I take a little Q-tip that has some alcohol on it and I will wipe down my needle just like this because otherwise it might get a bit gummy. I personally use a standard needle on my sewing machine but I have heard of other people using a more heavy duty needle. I've never needed that and I do sew on um, lace and different fabrics and really thick cardstock and I've never had a problem and I've never actually changed my needle yet. I've heard that paper can dull your needle but again I've had this sewing machine for a couple years and I've never had to change the needle. That might be by luck but I do feel like I take really good care of my sewing machine. I do clean it out often as well and I'm not going to do a full tutorial on cleaning my machine or anything like that but I mean like underneath where the bobbin is stored, you can pull this little door up, you know, and I clean all in there because I do get a ton of dust from sewing on paper. And I also make sure to clean off all of the dust in the surrounding areas on my sewing machine. So I think that those things definitely help keep um, my sewing machine working really well. If you're wondering what kind of thread I use, I usually use this brand right here, Gutterman, and I just like it. It works well for my sewing machine and it comes in a ton of different colors. Okay, so I'm gonna demonstrate just a bit. Now I already have a ton of videos um, sewing paper and I do have two other videos where I show you how to thread your bobbin and how to get started with your sewing machine if it's this particular one. I'll have all of that stuff linked below. But I'm just gonna sew so you can kind of see what I do. Um, 
I always, like I said, I have the stitching length set to 2.0. And now I'll show you a difference of what that would look like if I had it a little bit closer together. So let's actually go back to what it was set at. And I'm just gonna do the zigzag, zigzag stitch. Now I'm going to go ahead and just take that out so you can see. So like I said, so this is, this stitching length is at 1.0. So you can see it's really close together, which means it could easily tear your paper. So now let me show you what it's going to look like if I bring it up to, like I said, I usually like to do around 2.0. show you what the difference is and you can see down at the bottom compared to the top you're gonna have much less chance of your needle or sorry of your paper tearing when the stitch length is a little bit further apart so that's a huge tip that I totally recommend um, let's see what else I'm gonna go ahead and I will sew on a little bit of uh, collage and so I'm gonna take some paper I know this is something that a lot of crafters like to do is collaging and so you're going to have lots of different textures and we're going to put a little bit of lace right here we're going to put a little bit of collage paper now one thing i want to mention is when you're having any type of like tissue papers collage papers you also want to make sure to sew kind of slow because this does it can i should say it can get caught into your needle just a little bit um if you're like going too fast or that's what I've found so I just go rather slow so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to change this stitch back to a just a straight stitch and my length is at 2.5 right now so that should be fine and so you just go slow and there you go and really the only other tips that I have for you is that I, you, you don't have to worry about having a perfect straight stitch at all. Um, honestly, just don't worry about perfection, especially when you're starting out. Go slow. When you are, when you're at a corner, I typically stop. I'll pull up on my foot here and then I turn the paper and then I'll do another straight stitch down. That's just how I do it. I'll finish this one up here. I've also been asked if I tie off my threads and I want to say that I don't do that because I like that messy stringy look but I've literally never had anything come apart even when I'm sewing like two pieces of paper together or something like that. Um, I don't have things come apart so I also don't typically do a back stitch but if you are sewing like several pieces of paper together and you want to make sure they don't come apart then I would suggest doing a back stitch before you get started and if you want you can totally tie your threads off but again I know a lot of us are going for that messy look kind of like that I also wanted to mention that anytime I'm sewing something that has several layers where the there might be like a lot of threads or maybe the paper is very uh, fragile, I do recommend sewing in layers and I'll show you what I mean real quick. I'm gonna take everything off. I don't have anything glued on um, on this little like snippet roll kind of thing. So basically I'll start out by sewing a line with just these items on here just to hold everything down. And then when I am wanting to sew on, uh, I know a lot of people will like kind of take a bunch of thread, kind of group it up sort of like that. Hopefully you can see what I'm saying. Um, instead of sewing right over this, that will possibly make your needle um, kind of jam up. 
I do like to place over my very top item like this. And then again, I'm gonna go over this rather slow and I'm going to be very careful to make sure that these little single threads aren't going to get caught up in the needle. And sometimes it still happens, but you just have to do your best to try and go like this. And then since I do have a bunch of threads on this one, they may not be completely secure just with that one stitch through. So then I might go ahead and just do one more down each side. I'm gonna do a zigzag stitch and I feel like zigzag stitches also really secure things on your paper. We'll actually just go ahead and go all the way around that little postage stamp. And I can see right now that I'm sewing on top of the paper and that the strings are, sorry, that the thread is not really um, exposed to that needle by itself. So we'll just go like that. And now everything is good to go like that. So there's that little tip. So if you have any specific questions, I would love to start this video off as the start to another um, sewing video where I can do a and a So I would be happy to answer any questions that you have about sewing on paper. This really should be able to get you started and I promise if you have a good quality sewing machine, again, does not have to be expensive, you will be golden. You can learn this, you got this. It's so fun to sew on paper, especially when you're working with journals and things like that because it gives your pieces just such a fun look. And I love sewing on paper and I've never sewed before this. I, I'm not someone who sews on fabric or anything like that. So um, I think that's really all that I have to give you today, but I would be happy to answer any other questions. And I hope that this was somewhat helpful to you guys. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.